Hello and welcome to the Boring Chemistry channel. In this video I will explain why reactions actually happen. When two chemicals or elements are mixed together, why do they suddenly react without any external conditions? For example, when I mixed ethanoic acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate, a reaction took place instantaneously. Why is this? Well, it turns out it's all to do with a thing called entropy. What is entropy, you ask? In thermodynamics, entropy is a measure of the number of specific ways in which a thermodynamic system may be arranged. In other words, entropy is a property of matter that can be quantized by randomness or disorder. For example, a solid has a lower entropy than liquids and gases. This is due to the fact that molecules of gases and liquids have an increased freedom of movement. This is all well and good, but what effect does entropy have on why two molecules or atoms will spontaneously react with one another? It's all down to the second law of thermodynamics which state, in a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases. This can be represented as a mathematical equation where the entropy change of the universe equals the entropy change of the surroundings plus the entropy change of the system. In other words, for a reaction to spontaneously happen, the entropy of the universe must be positive. We all know that exothermic reactions release heat and endothermic reactions absorb heat. When heat is released in an exothermic reaction, it is given out from the system to the surroundings, in turn increasing the entropy of the surroundings as the surroundings have more energy. The same principle applies in an endothermic reaction in which entropy of the surroundings would decrease. To see entropy in action, we can use the example of sodium chloride or common salt dissolving in water to aid us in our understanding of entropy. The process involves sodium chloride moving from a solid to an aqueous state. Thus, the entropy of NaCl in a solution is greater than the entropy of solid NaCl. This makes the entropy change of the system positive. On the other hand, sodium chloride dissolving in water is an endothermic process as shown by the enthalpy of the reaction. Thus, the entropy of the surrounding is negative. However, we know that sodium chloride dissolves in water, so we can assume that the overall entropy change of the universe is positive, so the reaction takes place as it abides by the second law of thermodynamics. We can calculate the entropy change of the surroundings using the following equation. Entropy change of the surroundings equals heat absorbed by the surroundings divided by the temperature of the surroundings. To calculate the entropy of a system, we can use the following formula and standard entropy tables. The entropy change of a system equals the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants in molar quantities. Using these two equations and the equation to calculate the total entropy of the universe, we can mathematically prove whether sodium chloride should dissolve in water under standard conditions. In a solution, we can see that NaCl disassociates into Na plus and Cl minus ions. Using the two equations, we can calculate the entropy change of the system and the surroundings. Note that the reaction was endothermic, thus the energy was drawn from the surroundings into the system. Thus, the value for the energy of the surroundings must be negative as shown in the equation. In the end, the value for the entropy change of a system was 43.4 joules per kelvin per mole and the value for the entropy change of the surroundings was minus 12.98 joules per kelvin per mole. Thus we can therefore prove that the total entropy change for the universe is in fact positive, 30.42 joules per kelvin per mole to be exact. The second law of thermodynamics states that in a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases. As we can see, our calculations show that the entropy of the universe does in fact increase when sodium chloride is dissolved in water. Thus, the reaction abides by the second law of thermodynamics and can in fact take place. And that's why reactions happen in terms of entropy. These calculations can be done much more easily with the use of Gibbs energy, but that's another topic for another time. Thanks for watching.